Heart failure medications, part four, new drug therapies. In part four, we'll take a look at some new drug therapies used for the treatment of heart failure. SGLT2 inhibitors. SGLT2 inhibitors are also known as sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors. SGLT2 inhibitors are approved for the management of type 2 diabetes. They have been recently investigated in several large-scale placebo-controlled trials for cardiovascular safety as well as efficacy in patients with type 2 diabetes. SGLT2 inhibitors have been found to significantly improve cardiovascular outcomes in patients with established heart failure, either with or without diabetes. SGLT2 inhibitors decrease renal glucose reabsorption and increase urinary glucose excretion, reducing fasting and postprandial blood glucose levels. They work by reducing the absorption of glucose via the kidneys so that excess glucose is excreted through urination. SGLT2 is a low affinity, high capacity glucose transporter protein that's located in the proximal tubule of the kidneys. It facilitates glucose reabsorption in the kidney and is responsible for 90% of glucose reabsorption. In the diagram, you can see where SGLT2 is located in the renal proximal tubule. It facilitates the glucose reabsorption from the urine back into the bloodstream. SGLT2 inhibitors block the reabsorption of glucose in the kidney, increasing renal glucose excretion and lowering blood glucose levels. So you can see where SGLT2 inhibitors block the reabsorption of glucose, sending glucose out in the urine. SGLT2 inhibitors improve cardiovascular outcomes in heart failure, but how it accomplishes this remains unknown. SGLT2 inhibition results in naturesis, osmotic diuresis, weight loss, and blood pressure reduction. These effects in other trials of weight loss and blood pressure reduction have not shown similar beneficial results. Cardiorenal benefits cannot be explained by the action to lower blood glucose since similar results have not been seen with other anti-diabetic agents. The Food and Drug Administration has approved the use of both dapagliflozin and empagliflozin for treatment of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, irrespective of diabetes status and it is anticipated that both drugs will be added to guideline-directed medical therapy. There are two SGLT2 inhibitors that are indicated for heart failure. The first one is dapagliflozin, or Farxiga, which is made by AstraZeneca. It's FDA approved to reduce the risk of cardiovascular death and hospitalization for heart failure in patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. The dose is 10 milligrams daily with a monthly acquisition cost of about $500 wholesale acquisition. The other SGLT2 inhibitor is named empagliflozin or Jardians, made by Boehringer and Lilly. It's FDA approved to reduce the risk of cardiovascular death plus hospitalization from heart failure in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, regardless of type 2 diabetes status. The dose is 10 milligrams a day and its monthly cost is also around $500 wholesale acquisition cost. Both drugs need to be taken in the morning to avoid nocturia, take it with or without food, and monitor for adverse drug reactions such as hypokalemia, genital mycotic infections, volume depletion, ketoacidosis, and a possible increase in, risk, in fracture risk. Let's go over some of the trials involving the SGLT2 inhibitors that brought these indications. The DAPA-HF trial, Dapagliflozin and Prevention of Adverse Outcomes in Heart Failure, was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in November of 2019. This study evaluated the effect of dapagliflozin in patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction with and without type 2 diabetes. It was a randomized placebo-controlled study at 410 centers in 20 countries, 4,744 patients with New York Heart Association class 2-4 heart failure 
and ejection fractions of less than or equal to 40 percent were studied. Dapagliflozin 10 milligrams per day was studied compared with placebo. 95 percent of patients were taking an ACE inhibitor ARB or ARNI, beta blockers in 96 percent of patients, mineraloreceptor antagonists in 71 percent, and digoxin in 20 percent. 42 percent of patients had diabetes and the trial went for over 18.2 months. Study results showed that dapagliflozin decreased the composite of worsening heart failure, hospitalization or urgent visit, or cardiovascular death from 21% to 16%, with a p-value of 0 0.001. It also reduced the all-cause mortality from 14% to 11.6 percent. There was no significant difference in terms of adverse drug reactions such as volume depletion, renal dysfunction, or hypoglycemia. Findings in patients with diabetes were similar to those without diabetes. Empagliflozin was studied in the Emperor Reduce trial, which was published in JAMA in October of 2020. This study evaluated cardiovascular and renal outcomes with empagliflozin in heart failure. This is a randomized placebo-controlled study at 520 centers in 20 countries. 3,730 patients with New York Heart Association class 2 to 4 heart failure and ejection fractions of less than or equal to 40% were studied. Empagliflozin 10 mg per day was compared with placebo. 90% of patients were taking an ACE inhibitor, ARB, or ARNI, 95% beta blockers, 70% mineraloreceptor antagonists, and 20% of those patients were taking an ARNI, or angiotensin receptor blocker neprilysin inhibitor. 50% of patients had diabetes. The results of this trial showed that empagliflozin decreased the composite of cardiovascular death or hospitalization for heart failure from 24.7% to 19.4% with a p-value of 0 0.001. This was driven primarily by rehospitalization for heart failure rates from 18% to 13%. Uncomplicated genital tract infections were reported more frequently in the empagliflozin group. However, there was no significant difference with ADR such as hypoglycemia, limb amputation, or bone fractures between the two groups. As I stated earlier, the benefit was primarily driven by hospitalization, not cardiovascular death, and the effect was consistent regardless of presence or absence of diabetes. Let's move on and talk a little bit about a new drug named Vericiguat. Vericiguat, or Vercuvo, is manufactured by Merck. Vericiguat is an oral-soluble guanylate cyclase stimulator for heart failure. It increases the activity of the second messenger cyclic guanosine monophosphate, or cyclic GMP, which is involved in regulation of protective cardiovascular, kidney, and metabolic actions. Vericiguat is the second guanylate cyclase stimulator to be marketed in the United States. Real Ciguat, which is FDA approved for treatment of pulmonary hypertension, was the first. Vericiguat, which was FDA approved in January of 2021, is indicated to reduce the risk of hospitalization for heart failure and cardiovascular death following a worsening heart failure event hospitalization for heart failure, or treatment with IV diuretics as an outpatient, in patients with symptomatic chronic heart failure and left ventricular ejection fraction less than 45%. Here's a diagram that illustrates the mechanism of action of Vericiguat. Nitric oxide binds to guanylate cyclase to increase the production of cyclic GMP, which leads to smooth muscle relaxation and vasodilation. In heart failure, endothelial dysfunction and reactive oxygen species reduce nitric oxide bioavailability. Heart failure is associated with impaired synthesis and increased breakdown of nitric oxide and decreased guanylate cyclase activity. Vericiguat binds to and stimulates guanylate cyclase independently of 
and synergistically with endogenous nitric oxide, leading to smooth muscle relaxation and vasodilation. The Victoria study, Vericiguat in patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction, was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in March of 2020. This was a double-blind randomized placebo-controlled multi-center trial. Over 5,000 patients with symptomatic chronic heart failure and a ejection fraction less than 45% who had been hospitalized for heart failure within the previous six months or required outpatient treatment with IV diuretics within the previous three months was studied. Patients were randomized to receive Vericiguat for the target dose of 10 milligrams once a day or placebo, each added to standard heart failure therapy. 90% of patients reached 10 milligram dose. 91% of patients were taking two or more heart failure meds and 60% of patients were taking triple therapy. 6% were on evabradine and 3% on SGLT2 inhibitors. After a median of 10.8 months, significantly fewer patients treated with the Vericiguat had cardiovascular death or first hospitalization for heart failure compared to placebo. This is with a p-value of 0 0.02. However, when cardiovascular death and first hospitalization for heart failure were evaluated as separate endpoints, the differences between variciguat and placebo were not statistically significant. Whether longer duration exposure to variciguat would have resulted in a significant reduction in cardiovascular death is unknown. Variciguat is available in 2.5 5 and 10 milligram tablets. The starting dose is 2.5 milligrams taken once a day with food. The daily dose should be doubled every two weeks as tolerated up to a target dose of 10 milligrams per day. The tablets may be crushed and mixed with water. A 30 day supply of Vericiguat costs about $600. Dosage adjustment. No dosage adjustment is required in patients with an estimated GFR greater than or equal to 15 mL per minute. Vericiguat has not been studied in severe renal failure or in dialysis patients. No dosage adjustment is required in mild to moderate liver impairment. Vericiguat has not been studied in severe hepatic impairment. Let's go over the kinetics of Vericiguat. Regarding absorption, the absolute bioavailability of Vericiguat is 93% when taken with food. The mean volume distribution is 44 liters. Protein binding is 98%. Vericiguat is metabolized via glucuronidation by UGT1A9 to form an inactive metabolite. It's metabolized less than 5% by CYP enzymes. The half-life is 30 hours, so it's very long half-life and it's eliminated about 53% in the urine, primarily as the inactive metabolite, and 45% in the feces, primarily as the unchanged drug. Drug interactions. Because of a possible increased risk of hypotension, concomitant use of Vericiguat and phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors, such as sildenafil, is not recommended. Adverse effects. Asymptomatic hypotension and syncope were more common in patients who received Vericiguat than in those who received placebo. Other adverse effects that had an incidence greater than 5% included hypotension and anemia. There is a black box warning that states that Vericiguat is contraindicated for use during pregnancy because it may cause fetal harm. An effective form of contraception is recommended during treatment and for one month after stopping Vericiguat. Women should be advised not to breastfeed while taking the drug. So to summarize, in patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction who had recently been hospitalized for heart failure or required outpatient treatment with an IV diuretic, addition of Vericiguat to standard therapy modestly reduced the risk of a composite endpoint of death from cardiovascular causes or first hospitalization for heart failure after a median of 10.8 months. The efficacy of Vericiguat in patients taking an optimized heart failure regimen that includes Secubitril-Valsartan and an SGLT2 inhibitor is unknown, 
long-term efficacy data are needed. In this segment of Medications for Heart Failure, we describe the mechanism of action of SGLT2 inhibitors. We outline the heart failure indications for SGLT2 inhibitors. We explain the mechanism of action of variciguat. We define variciguat's FDA indication for heart failure. And we discuss variciguat's dose, kinetics, drug interaction, and adverse reactions. We've got a lot in store at the Farm Easy Tutor channel. There will be upcoming talks on anticoagulation featuring warfarin, heparin, and the DOAX, electrolyte management, quinolone side effects, all about hospital pharmacy, and much, much more. So please stay tuned to us. Thanks for tuning in to watch this installment of the Farm Easy Tutor. I hope you learned something that you could use at school or in practice. If you'd like to continue to see more of these types of tutorials on YouTube, please make sure to click on the subscribe button below to change it from red to gray. Also, if you like this video, I would appreciate it if you can click on the thumbs up icon below to change the color to blue. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to add them in the comment section below or share this site with someone else. Stay tuned to the Farm Easy Tutor channel for more lectures in the upcoming weeks. So until next time, remember to take it easy.